Hey, you guys. Um, hope you guys are doing well. We are pushing on with chapter one. Um, this is our last bit of new information for chapter one um, before your test. Uh, something that you'll need as I'm going through this video lecture is you need your calculator handy and of course you need your notes. So I want to show you how to um, uh, convert using what we call conversion factors um, using a process called dimensional analysis. Um, so it's dimensional analysis is a really fancy way of basically saying converting using fractions. You may have done this in your math class, um, but I'm not sure if you've gotten there yet. So when it comes to dimensional analysis, it's a process using equalities. So like one gram um, is equal to 100 centigrams. So a process using equalities in the form of fractions to convert from one unit to another unit. So for instance, from feet to inches or from centimeters to feet or from kilograms to centigrams. Um, conversion factors are fractions used to convert from one unit to another. Um, conversion factors are uh, basically fractions. Um, we just call them in science conversion factors. Let me get my pen here all ready to go. Okay, so, um, so conversion factors are literally fractions and they're used to convert from one unit to another. Um, so what we do with dimensional analysis before we start, and we're just going to jump straight into it, um, all equalities, anytime we're going to convert, we're going to start with an equality, and you'll be given the equality. I will give that to you. You just need to figure out what goes on the top and what goes on the bottom, and then you have to show your work, and then you have to um, use your calculator. So all equalities can be made into two conversion factors. Okay, so... What I want to do is I want to show you, and we're just going to use this one equality right up here. Um, okay, so our one equality, you can always take one equality and make it into two conversion factors. So if I say one dozen is equal to 12 eggs, I can make it into two fractions, basically. And those two fractions are going to look like this. I could say one dozen over 12 eggs or I could say 12 eggs over one dozen. So this is considered to be conversion fraction, a conversion factor and as you can see it's a fraction and this is also. So every single equality can be made into two conversion factors. Which conversion factor we use depends on what we're solving for. So let me give you one more example. I could say one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And that could be put into a conversion factor, two conversion factors. I could say one kilogram over 1,000 grams. Or I could say 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these conversion factors to convert from one unit to another. So we're just going to, like I said, just jump in here. Um, so um, we're going to set up a problem like a multiplication problem using fractions. Um, Always put the unit you want to get rid of on the bottom of the fraction. The units we want to get rid of goes on the bottom of the fraction. A few things um, when we do these problems, especially on your, your test that will be coming up, I grade per every correct conversion factor. So there's a lot of ways that you can solve these uh, doing different math things mathematically, but I'm looking for the process. So if you don't show the conversion factors, you're going to miss out on the points for the problem. Okay, so our question says, um, you are baking cookies for the entire freshman class, and your recipe calls for 463 eggs. You are at Sam's, and they will only sell eggs in dozens. Um, so now we need to figure out how many dozens we're going to need to purchase to make our cookies. We're going to solve using dimensional analysis. 
So we always start with what we're given. Um, we are given 463 eggs. And we need to convert that to dozens so we can just pick up some dozen eggs instead of single, count out 463 single eggs. So I'm going to go back to um, the conversion factors. Okay, so if you remember um, before, I said that we would have one or two conversion factors were one dozen over 12 eggs or we could have 12 eggs over one dozen. Okay, so we need to figure out which one we want to which one we want to use. Um, the the conversion factor we use is the one that gives us the units that are on the bottom that matches the units we're given here. The idea is we want to cancel out the the given units with the units on the bottom of the fraction and be left with what we're solving for. So this is how we're going to set it up. We're going to use this guy right here. So I'm going to do times, I'm going to put my division line, I'm going to put my 12 eggs on the bottom, and that equals one dozen. I'm going to cross out my eggs. Now you're always going to want to make sure that these two are diagonal. Whatever units you have here should match the units down here. That gives you an idea of which of these two you need to use. So now I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to, this is a division problem. If you want, you can put a one under here. So it looks like you're multiplying straight across and then multiply straight across the bottom. So I could do 463 dozen. And then I could multiply straight across the bottom. One times 12 is 12. Put my answer down here. Um, now I'm just going to pop into my calculator, 463 divided by 12 gives me 38.58 dozen, so I'm probably going to want to round that guy up to 39 dozen eggs. This process is dimensional analysis. This is what I would consider showing your work. If you want to do this step right here, you're more than welcome to. Um, it's not necessary, but you sure can. Okay, let's look at a few problems here. Okay. So let's look at A. A says 22.6 inches to centimeters. We want to convert 22.6 inches, and we want to convert it to centimeters. So here's my equality. I have to convert this, or I have to change this into a fraction. How I know which part goes on the top and what part goes on the bottom, whatever units I start with here, the matching units go on the bottom. So I'm going to do times, do my division line. The one inch goes on the bottom, and that's equal to 2.54 centimeters. Inches cancel out. I can put a one under there if I want. I'm going to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Now there's nothing to do on the bottom, so this is strictly a um, multiplication problem. So 22.6 times 2.54 is equal to, and I'm just going to round it two places past the decimal, 57, whoa, 57, that's funky, 0.40 centimeters. So 22.6 inches is the same as 57.40 centimeters. Um, okay, let's look at B. So letter B, um, on March 24th, uh, 89, Exxon Valdez struck a reef in Prince William Sound, Alaska, spilling 37,854,120 liters of crude oil. What is the volume in gallons? So we're going to start with what we're given. So our 37,854,000 gallons. 
120 liters. Now, this is my conversion factor. I want to go from liters to gallons, so it makes a little bit more sense in our head. So I'm going to do times. I'm going to put my conversion factor. My one liter goes on the bottom. My point two six four gallons goes on the top. Now I know the liters go on the bottom because I have liters right here. So my liters cancel out. I can put a one under here if I like. There's no dividing to do because I have a one underneath each fraction. So three seven eight five four one two zero divided by 0.264 is equal to, are you ready for this? I need a drum roll. Let's see, 143, eight, eight, gallons. So that is 143,386,818 gallons. That's how much oil was spilt in the Prince William Sound, Alaska. Um, 143 million gallons of crude oil. That's a lot. Okay, let's do a few more. Um, I hope you guys are writing these into your notebook so you've got some examples because you're going to um, hopefully get some whiteboarding in. Okay, so let's look at A. At, at 553 meters, meters tall, the um, CN Tower in Toronto, Canada is one of the tallest structures in the world. What is the tower's height in miles? Now I've given you two equalities. That means we're going to do a two-step problem. So I'm going to start with what I have. So 500 and 53 meters times, I'm going to put my division line, and I'm going to come over here. Now I have to decide. I have to get to miles. So I'm going to have to use both of these. I have meters right here. I'm not going to use this one because I don't have meters. Here I have meters. So whatever I have here, I should match the unit here. So my 1,000 meters goes here. And that equals one kilometer. So my meters are canceling out. I'm not done yet because I'm at kilometers, but I want to hit miles. So I got one more conversion to do. So now I'm going to use this guy. Since I have one kilometer here, okay, the one kilometer goes down here. This unit, whatever I want to get rid of, should match. So diagonal should match. So one kilometer is equal to 0.6 miles. Whatever I'm solving for, I should end up with on the top. So kilometers cancel out. So see how meters and meters match, kilometers and kilometers match. Now I'm gonna put a one right here, and now it's all math. Now this time I've got something besides the one on the bottom of the fraction, so I have to divide. So this is how I'm gonna put my calculator. I'm gonna do 553, times 0.6 equals, and then divide it by 1,000, and that is going to give me 0.3318 miles. So what's that, about a third of a mile? Um, pretty tall for a building. Let's look at our next one. Um, a person's weight is 69.6 kilograms. Uh, what is the person's weight in pounds? Now, again, I have given you um, two conversion factors, so or two equalities, so we have to do this in two steps again. So person's weight is 69.9 kilograms. Now, first I want to get rid of kilograms. I eventually want to get to pounds. So I have to choose the one that has kilograms in it. So this equality has kilograms, and the kilograms goes on the bottom because do you remember diagonal units match. 
So one kilogram over 1,000 grams. Now my kilograms cancel out. I'm sitting at grams, but I need pounds. I've got one more step to go. Now I'm going to use this guy right here. I'm going to say 454 grams over one pound is equal to grams are canceled out. Again, diagonals match. Kilograms to kilograms, grams to grams. Now it's all math. Again, if you would like to put a 1 under here, you can. I'm going to mul multiply everything straight across, multiply everything straight across the bottom, and then divide. So 69.9 times it by 1,000 times it by 1 would be 69,900. 69, and I'm going to keep the pounds. And then 1 times 454. Got no units because they're all canceled out. Now it's strictly a division problem. 69,900 divided by 454 is going to give me 153.96, and that's pounds. So 153 pounds this person weighs. Oh, we already did that one, and that's good. Um, so what do you guys think? I don't think it's too bad. Um, you're going to always have this video to go back to and watch um, to get you, you ready, but you guys are going to do a bunch of practicing. Um, so if you have any questions, let Ms. Leslie know, and um, you guys have a great day.